Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. We on the top, woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Go Caitlin will be uh, to your right, standing in the back row. Hey, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> Megan McEwen, Big Ten Network. Congratulations, first off. Now that you're officially the number one pick, what about your game do you feel like is going to translate best over to the W and specifically in Indiana? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is definitely my passing. I think that's at times kind of what gets overlooked Third. in my game. I think um, the, the pa I think the scoring and the long shots is what everybody falls in love with. And then obviously going to an organization that has, in my eyes, one of the best post players Seriously. in the entire world. Right. That's right. my right. point guard eyes just light up at that. And obviously, Aliyah has been one of my teammates before. So um, I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, but yeah. Uh, Sarah, right there. Me? Uh, hi. Caitlin, third row to your left. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Hi. Uh, who's your biggest rival going into the season? Honestly, like, I don't really feel like I have a rival. I think the biggest thing is, like, the WNBA is so competitive right now. Every sing single time you step on the floor, um, it's going to be a rivalry. I think so many teams are loaded um, with so much talent, and this is the most competitive league in the entire world, less than 144 spots. So, uh you better bring it every single night, um, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do, but I think that's exactly how I, I lived my college career, too, is like every single game, no matter what the opponent was, I prepped the exact same way, I prepared the same way, I brought the same fire, I brought the same energy, and um, I think that's the biggest thing going into, into my WNBA career. Andre. Hey, Caitlin Howard, my Dalton Etch. Congratulations. Um, I, I saw you share a moment with Lisa uh, after uh, getting the pick. Can you just take us through, you know, what that conversation was, what you guys were talking about, and what it meant to share that with her after you guys are, you know, essentially the two who believe you can make it to back-to-back -back Final Fours? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing is, like, I vividly remember Coach Bluter, like, coming and doing my home visit um, in my house during my recruiting. It was at the end of my junior year, I believe, or maybe the beginning of my junior year, around sometime in my junior year, end of my junior year. And I think the biggest thing is, like, we talked about this moment. We dreamed of this moment, but she also believed I would be here, and she coached me really hard to get to this moment. There was a lot of ups and downs. Um, and something I really appreciate about Coach Bluter is, like, no matter what awards or success or wins we ever had or I had is like, she never stopped coaching me. She never stopped holding me accountable. Um, she always thought there was ways for me to get better. And I was, she still thinks that. Um, and I still think that, and that's one of the things I just love about her is like, first of all, she believed I would be here from the day I committed to her even before that when I was in eighth grade, but also um, she pushed me really hard uh, to make me as good as I am. Thanks. Caitlin, the center to your left in the second row. Hi, Jennifer Porti from Let's Talk Women in Basketball. Which player are you looking forward to playing with or against this season? Definitely Aaliyah Boston. Come on now. Um, and I think also Erica Wheeler, like a, a vet, somebody that's been in the league a long time, somebody that is in the organization, has been in the league, understands what it's about, somebody that I can lean on. Um, you know, I'm 22 years old and um, I don't have all the answers in the world. This is something new to me. This is a new challenge. Um, and that's something I'm excited for. But having those type of people around me uh, to lean on and, and ask questions or when things get hard uh, to be there for me. So I think, you know, those two for sure. Yeah. Uh, third, Caitlin, third row center. Caitlin, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, two questions. First, you've had a whirlwind and a long season. Are you glad that this part of it is over and that you can kind of focus on being a WNBA rookie? And also too, you mentioned that you know Aaliyah. What has your relationship been like and what are you most looking forward to playing, most looking forward about to playing with her? Yeah, I think the, you know, obviously the course of the last few weeks has been pretty insane um, in my life. You know, the last two months, you know, playing basketball as long as I possibly could in my college career. And then went home for a couple of days. I got off the plane when we landed in Iowa City. I drove directly back home, had my mom cook me a meal, and then I drove back to Iowa City the next day. Um, we had our celebration, and then I flew to L.A., flew to New York, and now I'm here sitting at the stage. But um, 
I think the biggest thing is like, I'm just very lucky to be in this moment and all these opportunities and these things, they're once in a lifetime. Um, and when, when things might get, you know, tiring or, you know, you have to do stuff. I think it, the biggest thing is to look at it as just like an opportunity. Um, this isn't something everybody gets to do. Um, it's once in a lifetime and just trying to soak in every single experience because um, I know how quick of a turnaround it is. And I have a lot of people helping me. And then Obviously, Aaliyah Boston, I mean, there's so much you can say about her rookie of the year. Um, in my eyes, one of the best players in the league. Um, and like I said, like as a point guard, like my biggest job is like, I'm just feeding Aaliyah the ball every single game. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there and be like, hey, go make a layup. <laughs> she's going to make my life easy. Um, but she's incredible. But the thing about I love about her is like she's just a great person. Like she loves the game. She knows the game. She supports the game. Um and she has a smile that affects a lot of people and brings a lot of joy to people when they watch her. So I can't wait to be her teammate again. Uh, Caitlin, in the center section, last row to your right. Hey, Caitlin, Dylan Manfred from Sportico. Uh, just curious about, you know, all the sponsorships you've had and all the NIL deals. How do you plan to maximize this business opportunity now that you are a professional basketball player in the WNBA? How do you plan to carry that on? And also what has been the biggest piece of business advice that somebody has given you uh, going into this next phase in your basketball career? Honestly, like, if I'm being completely honest, I feel like it doesn't change a ton from how I live my life over the course of the last year. Um, sponsorships stay the same. Uh, the people around me, you know, agents and whatnot have been able to help me and guide me through the course of the last year. And I don't know if I would be in this moment if it wasn't for a lot of them. And my mom has done a lot. My dad has done a lot. Um, so I think that's just the biggest thing of, you know, the advice I would say is just like lean on the people around you. Like I don't have to do every single thing. And I think at the same time, like in college, I always said like my main focus is on basketball. That's why I've had every other opportunity in my life is because of the way I carry myself, the way I play the game um, and going into my professional career, I plan to do the same exact thing is like my focus is solely on basketball, um, you know, being the best I can. I don't have to do school anymore. That's pretty exciting. I do have to get my degree. I graduate on May 14th. But other than that, um, you know, my 110% focus is on basketball. And, you know, when I do that really well and carry myself really well, everything kind of just takes care of itself. Uh, Caitlin, staying in the center center section, the last row right in front of the screen. Hey, Caitlin, uh, you made it more with the New York Times. Um, how has the filming been for the ESPN documentary um, with uh, uh, Omaha? And, like, do you think that'll help get people to watch the WNBA more to get, like, behind-the-scenes look? Absolutely. And, uh, and I'm actually an executive producer on the show, which has been kind of fun for myself. And when Peyton Manning reached out, obviously, it's his production company, I was a little skeptical at first. But I was like, I don't know if I really want to let people into my life like that. I've never really done it. But um, the way this year has unfolded, the way – um, you know, obviously Camilla and Kiki, the seasons that they had, I mean, you can't script it any better. It's been absolutely incredible for women's basketball. And if you're a women's basketball fan or you're not a women's basketball fan, I encourage you to watch the show when it comes out. I've seen bits and pieces. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it really allows you to understand the student athlete for way more than just a basketball player. And I think that's really important. I think that's going to allow, um, you know, fans of the W, fans of college to really, you know, understand what they go through, but love them even more for who they are and what they do and what they're about. So um, I'm excited for everybody to see it. And it's been a special project. Uh, Caitlin, to your right, second row, all the way to the right. Hi, Caitlin, Alexa, Phil, who, yes, fan, congratulations. Uh, the Fever haven't been to the postseason since Tamika Catchings was on the team. You've had some time to think about what your role could be like in, in Indiana. How important or how excited are you about the prospect of, of hopefully getting the Fever back into the playoffs with this young core that you're building around? Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely our goal is to get back to championship habits. And I think it's so cool for me. Like I vividly remember um, my freshman year during the bubble, we played Kentucky in the round of 32 and Tamika was on the game and I was like tweaking out. Like I couldn't believe she was calling one of my games, like Sierra. somebody I idolized, um, somebody that I loved and somebody that is not only a great basketball player and everything that she did, but she's a tremendous person. Um, and I just think that speaks to the organization as a whole and everything they do is so first class. And I'm very lucky to be, be going there uh, to an organization that, really loves women's basketball. I mean, you see it today. I think they had 17,000 tickets claimed to just watch the draft. I think that shows the excitement in Indianapolis. Um, it's a great basketball city. Obviously, what the Pacers have been able to do this year is special in the playoffs. And, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm just excited. And like you said, there's a lot of young talent on the team. And, you know, just getting back to the playoffs and doing everything we can to win a lot of basketball games is certainly the goal. 
Caitlin, to your left in the first row. Hi, Shara Taylor, New York Beacon. Congratulations. Thanks. Can you take us through the emotions of being the number one all-time scorer in the NCAA to the emotions you felt when you heard your name called today? Yeah, honestly, like, I feel like this was definitely a little bit more emotional for me. And I think that's because, like, when you're in the heat of competition, like, you don't have time to, like, really feel your emotions. Like, you're so competitive and you're so fiery. Like, you're not really worried about all that. And I think that was, like, the biggest thing through my career is, like, First of all, I was able to have a lot of closure in the way my career ended and uh, everything that was that I was able to do. Obviously, I played the maximum number of games I could play my senior year, and obviously we didn't win, but um, you know, I feel like you did everything you can uh, to be in that moment and compete as hard as you can. But when, you know, when you're kind of just sitting at a table waiting for your name to be called, I think that really allows the emotions to feed you, and you're with your family. Like Obviously, playing a basketball game, I'm not out there with my family, so sharing that moment with them and, and enjoying it and people that have really had my back and believed in me more than anyone is, is super special. All right. For our last question, we're going to turn to Zoom. Jeff, Linder, Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Caitlin, congratulations. Um, just, uh, um, you're, you're going to a basketball crazy state in, in Indiana. Indiana is basketball. Basketball is Indiana. Just uh, your thoughts of being part of that. Well, I know the Indiana Hoosiers didn't love me too much during my career, but hopefully we can turn a lot of them into Fever fans and if they're not already. Um, I think, you know, going to a state that supports not only basketball, but women's basketball. I mean, going and playing in front of at Indiana, like the place is sold out. Um, you know, doing the same for the Fever is, you know, certainly our goal and having a lot of fans there every single night and for myself, I can't imagine a more perfect fit, uh, a better place for me to start my professional career, an organization that really just believes in women's basketball and wants to do everything the right way. Um, so I couldn't be you know, more excited to get there. Caitlin, thank you. Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. Hey. We on the top, woo, woo. We on the top, woo, woo. We on the top, woo, woo. We on the top. Stop. Woo, woo. We on the top. Woo, woo. We on the top. Woo, woo. We on the top.